when I, as a father, talk to my daughter about how a woman should carry herself, and my wife is doing the same, when she goes to the masjid at a Friday khutbah, I want the khatib to reinforce what I'm building at home. Sometimes by being so vague, they can misapply it. The hadith says, فَهُوَ خَالِدٌ مُخَلَّدٌ فِي النَّارِ that this person will be in a perpetual state in hell. When you say this hadith, you want to create that shock effect. Allow that hadith to do its work. No, I'm not worried at all. I rely on God, Allah. I want to give you an example for my daughter, okay? I'm teaching my daughter, although she's eight years old, she's not at that age yet. But when I, as a father, talk to my daughter about the proper hijab and the proper how a woman should carry herself with hishma, bashfulness, and to, to be proud of her femininity and to embrace it and so on and so forth. And my wife is doing the same. I want that when she goes to the masjid at a Friday khutbah, that my message at home as a father it's being, is being reinforced by the khatib. I don't want my daughter to hear someone telling her, no one can judge you, You're, you have your own rights, and no one should tell you how to... No, I want the khatib to reinforce what I'm building at home. The same thing goes when, we, when we're talking about these national conventions. I want a public speaker to reinforce what the conditions of the hijab are. That your father loves you and he cares for you. That's why he wants you wearing the proper hijab. That's why he doesn't want you out late at night. I don't want my daughter to go to the khutbah and to literally hear everything being torn down, right? After me trying to do some building, you find that it's being torn down at the, at the, at the khutbah. Sometimes by being so vague, they can misapply it. And they can reinforce maybe uh, an incorrect idea or incorrect practice, correct? One of the biggest, I think, mafasid that this creates is when I speak explicitly about these matters, okay? And the others, for example, don't. Again, it goes back to, oh, this person is just extreme. Because my favorite YouTuber, Sheikh, my favorite Mufti, my favorite Imam, he never talks about this. Mm -hmm. So the perception is, oh, if he doesn't talk about it, that means it's okay. It's not an issue. And the other people who are addressing it head on, that must mean that they themselves are insecure or they're just extreme you know and of course the, the they're the, not mainstream they're pushing yeah. people away from the that's the best that, that's the best one right i'm being mm -hmm. sort of facetious here yeah. oh you're pushing people away from the masjid brother yeah no i'm, I'm just telling you what you have to hear because yeah. guess what we're, we're talking about punishment here yeah. some of the ulama they say when it comes to the ahadith that have to do with that are stern and that are very very harsh at the surface level you as a sheikh, as an imam, it is not ideal, nor is it of wisdom for you to go into clarifying this hadith because you don't, you don't want that to do its opposite or have its opposite effect. That when you're talking about a certain hadith, for example, a person who um, commits suicide, right? The hadith says, فَهُوَ خَالِدٌ مُخَلَّدٌ فِي النَّارِ Okay? That this person will be in, in a perpetual state in, in hell. Literally, right? You, when you say this hadith, you don't want to clarify to the people, well, no, the ulama said this, and they said that, and وَهَذَا يُحْمَلْ عَلَى هَذَا You don't want to do that. What you do want to do instead is to allow that hadith to do its work. You want to create that shock effect. When people are hearing this hadith, it shocks them. Like, whew. You don't want to mitigate that effect. The problem when you start, well, no, the ulama said, no, no. Right? They say, let the hadith at tarheeb let it do its work. Let it play its course. You want to allow certain things to be as they are.